Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. Glad you're with us tonight. We are talking uh, with two school board members who are here in person. Happy to have the school board chair, Christian Bugs, and, and Sharon Gentry. She's uh, representing District 1, uh, both up here. We were talking for the first part of the program about uh, critical race theory, certainly uh, an issue that has received a lot of attention lately. And we're just going to go to the phones now. Let's go to Rob. Hello, Rob. Yes. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing I want to talk about or a few things is I think we're going to teach anything in school to our children, which are, you know, very uh, susceptible things, is that all children, all kids, all people are equal. Uh, simple as that. You know, this thing, oh, this one had this when they were growing up, you know, they were white or whatever, Latino or whatever. Leave it alone. Teach them every, everybody's equal, and they got to strive to get what they want. They, it's not given to them. You know, uh, uh, there's good and bad in everybody. White, black, Spanish, Latino, whatever. You know, well, let's try to get forward. Are we going backwards or are we trying to go forward is what I'm trying to figure out. It seems like we're going going backwards from the time I was raised up, and I'm a 1970 model, so... You know, I never had any, had any, had any problems growing up, and it kind of seems like we're going backwards instead of forward. And I'll leave that alone. One other thing, though, you know, if anybody wants to say anything and complain, I think it would be the Native Indians that are on reservations right now. And that's my bottom line. Love everybody. Y'all take care and have a good night. All right, Rob. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rob. So you, you heard his comments. Concern we're going backward, not forward. He's essentially, I think, saying leave race out of it. You know, leave if they're black, white, Hispanic, whatever, leave that out of it. Um, but I'll let you respond to whatever you want about Rob there. So much to say. I mean, I think that means that we'd A, be teaching a skewed history if we leave out the demographics of people, if I ignore the obstacles that uh, a doctor of color had to go through to attain a degree. I think uh, you then ignore different inventors. You then, even when you talk about modern day accomplishments and talking about how students learn Pythagorean theorem and the different cultures that uh, have in, that invented certain mathematical terms and, and ways of thinking, I mean, I think we again we paint an inaccurate history but then we also do a disservice to the present I mean we continue to ignore that there is diversity in this world and that's just something that I can't get along with that at the end of the day I am black and I am, am a woman and I not only do I not, do not mind people seeing me that way I want them to see me that way because that is who I am that is part of part of me and so to dismiss people because it makes someone else feel uncomfortable is just inappropriate I, I again I would much rather spend time making students think critically making sure that they are intent intentional and thoughtful, making sure that they are well-rounded and confident. But confidence is built not just on a blind privilege, but it's built on reconciling feelings, past, present, and future, thinking about what motivates you and why. Think about why someone inspires you and how. I mean, I think, as Dr. Gentry said, we don't talk often about why things are the way they are. And children need to be able to, to wrestle with that and, and come to their own determination and not be indoctrinated in different ways like we've been doing for years, decades, centuries in this country. Yeah. And he's worried about moving backward, not forward. Yeah, and so uh, I don't know that it's 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 a backward or a forward thing, but I, but I think, you know, Rob, I would I would invite you to to consider um, you, you said you're a 70s baby. I'm a six, uh, I was born in 1969. And so one of the things I learned not until I got to graduate school, working on my doctorate about the history of American education and some other concepts, you think back to the GI Bill, right? The people of color who served in the military did not get those loans to be able to buy homes. And so that's where it starts, right? If you just, if you forget everything before that, even if you just want to start right there. And so when you have had a parent who served in the military, was able to get out, get a loan, get a home for you, have that stability in a neighborhood that was a red line just for you, um, so that's where your house was, and it was a safe neighborhood. The police were there to protect and serve. Um, and then you have that same person, a person of color, served at the same time, got out, but the law said, that's where we get to, the critical race theory is the theory that helps us to understand that there was a law. Why would there be a law that prohibited people of color from getting the same loan, having served in the same military for the same country? But let me again remind you that when what is being what what critical race theory really is and what is being assumed it is and the way it's being talked about are very different. We he, what we're hearing more more often than not 
from Rob and others is that we just don't want to talk about diversity. Those who are seeking to force us to change our curriculum, change our policies or our practices in the future, they're asking us to ignore diverse cultures or diverse uh, people of diverse backgrounds. So they're asking, and, and they're asking us to skew fact. One of the parents that came and spoke to us recently talked about how male seahorses incubate the babies and how students shouldn't learn that because gender fluid, fluidity would confuse them. I mean, it's, it's this kind of what I consider <laughs> radical erasure of fact that we don't want to participate in in Metro Nashville Public Schools. You know, so you get it's the not seahorses from the little magazine at the back that put the seeds in the water. That's not that's not a seahorse. Oh, okay. no. And Darn we need it. to make sure that, that children and young people <laughs> and adults know that. And so I think it's Nashville is moving forward. We are moving to a very inclusive nature. We are becoming more thoughtful. We are having the tough conversations. We are in making investments where we should, but to divest and force us to throw out millions of dollars worth of curriculum and textbooks, to ignore the professional development that our teachers have been involved in for years, to just, to just ignore their professionalism and expertise is what we're being asked to do, and no. Okay, uh, let's go to Mike. Hello, Mike. Hey, good evening, Ben, and good evening to the very distinguished sisters that are there this evening. Glad to see them. I'm a child of the 60s. I'm going to make three quick points. Uh, when I grew up, the only black history I was basically taught in the 60s was about George Washington Carver, a little bit about Frederick Douglass, not the ma uh, radical side of Frederick Douglass, but the softer side of Frederick Douglass. Uh, and basically, President Andrew Jackson, when we went to visit it out at the mansion here in Nashville, mm -hmm. said he was a great guy. I didn't know until later on that he had slaves and other things. These are the three points I want to say, and then that'll be it. You first need to know the symptoms before you can come up with a cure. Number two, generally, when people know better, they usually do better. Three, and finally, the truth will, in most cases, set you free. And that's where we need to be, set free. And until you know your past, all past, because black history is American history, we need to know everything, not one part, but all of the parts of the pie. And then we can truly, really go forward. And uh, you guys have a blessed night tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mike, thank you. Um, what, what do you think about what Mike said? Ditto. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, I just, I can't stress enough that we, we want to teach fact. We want to teach our stu students to think critically. Yes, we want to teach them to reconcile their feelings. Yeah, and so, but I'll, I'll pull the thread a little bit on his uh, comment about symptoms, right? So he said, until you look at the symptoms you know, to, to know what the problem is. But we have to remember that a lot of what we're seeing, right, uh, whether it's in economic disparity, the social disparity, the education disparities, that ironically seem to fall along uh, racial and socioeconomic lines, those divides are symptoms. And so these texts, causes someone to start to ask the critical questions and make that connection. Well, hey, you know, maybe the, 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 the inordinate um, rate of, of incarceration of black males has its roots in them always being viewed as property and then being, um, you know, uh, you know, stick with the, the military and service thing, uh, line, then being uh, drafted to serve a country that never cared anything about them and only saw them as property, then treated them as second, third, fourth, or fifth class citizens in that same military, uh, uh, required them to lay their, put their lives on the line for a country, again, that viewed them as property or less than, then releases them from that same military without a leg to stand on. And then you fast forward to where we are today. But that's not what's going to be taught to a seven-year-old. No, but what you're, I'm saying we're is... We're getting to that big level yeah, here. But that, so you're, so you're what saying, I'm saying is that they start to build this fundamental base of knowledge. And then it may come back and say, you know, hey, maybe there's some way that I can create a stronger allyship at a younger age, right? Um, to start to, 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 to actually call out the inequities that I see and not wait until you know you're 112 and join the school board right and so i made that comment from the board floor is part of our concern back to the seahorse example that we're going to create ally create this concept of uh, this feeling of allyship in a young age that i'm not suggesting that you know a child understand gender fluidity and make that connection to a seahorse but as they 
start to build a base of knowledge over their years of going through metro schools and, and having a broader and more diverse and more accurate curriculum source, right? That when they leave us and they transition into their, their, their next step, whether that's higher ed, two year, whatever it is, they now have a broader understanding of the social construct in which they live. I think people are uncomfortable when you start messing with their historical heroes. I mean, we all learned yeah. about, you know, this is, you know, George Washington, what, did he cut down the cherry tree, whatever. I'm, I'm not the best example, of it, but, <laughs> but, you know, we have these stories that we learned, and then if we, if we change them, and, and even make them more accurate, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. And so, what do you say to people that are like, please leave my heroes alone, let's not, let's not destroy our heroes, or that kind of talk? You know, what, what, what do you say? I remind them that we are all human, that we are people, that you can have a love for the person and despise something that they did. You can admire them for one thing and dislike them for another. I think that's what heroes remind you that, a good hero reminds you that you too can be a hero. They inspire you, they push you, they motivate you, they make you think critically. I, just, I cannot leave <laughs> that theme alone about that cognitive, I mean, that um, reconciling feelings and thinking critically. That I mean, that's what I want to, that's the type of person that I want to be, and that's the type of person that I want to push my son to be, a critical thinker, someone that reconciles with the good and bad that's in anyone and even that, that was in, that's within himself. And so uh, I think I remember her, Dr. Gentry always saying that schools are where community issues bubble up. So if in the community there are race relations that are distorted, there are disparities that are very clear for us all to see, then of course in the schools not only will we, will we see those same disparities, but yes they will be talked about, especially by this generation of young people that have access to much more than we ever had. Yeah. I mean they have cell phones, they have social media, they see people literally tens of thousands of miles away in a second, and they have a, a true conversation they see the different lives and experiences of their peers that don't look like them. They don't grow up in the same state, city, or country as them. And so they're being exposed to more and they're pushing back more. They're looking at those of us who are older and they're, they're forcing us to think more critically. And I do think that's where the anxiety and the fear comes from. Mm -hmm. That for the first time, someone who was not taught all of the things that these young people are being taught, we're then having to reconcile with feeling like, ah, how did I not know this? And is this true? Should my child know that? Well, if it's fact, yes, they should. Yeah. All right. We are going to take a break. I am going to. I'll really stop asking questions. We we we'll go to. We'll take calls. So we'll take a break, and I'll take your calls right after this.